Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys. Today we're going to do a short little video. I'm getting ready to start loading some 10 millimeter. Uh, figured since I was getting ready to get set up, I would show you all the setup for the dies. I know there's a lot of new reloaders coming about after the 2020 uh, ammo pandemic that we've got going on. So a lot of people are getting into reloading. I know components are hard to find, dies are hard to find, presses are hard to find, but if you do look into getting some, getting enough stuff to get set up, I'll walk you through getting set up with your dies and getting getting ready to rock and roll on loading some ammo. So I'm gonna be loading on this Lee Classic turret press. I really enjoy this press because it's super easy to swap calibers on. Uh, you can change back and forth pretty quick. Uh, pretty versatile little press. Granted, it's nothing high dollar, nothing special. You can get into, I think, the whole kit for about 250 or so under normal circumstances. So, and the die setup's gonna be the same with any press, whether it be single stage, turret press, progressive, whatever. The only difference is on this one, I don't have to remove the die each time I change to do something else because the turret head will spin and I can do a round from start to finish with this, whereas a single stage, you gotta do it in batches. Uh, <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the things you're gonna need to get going. First thing's gonna be the dies. This is gonna be your resize and deep priming die. This will shrink the body of the brass back down to the dimensions that it needs to be while knocking the old primer out. That's gonna be the first die that you use. The next die is gonna be the expander die. Now this is a Lee powder through expander die. So I'll take, I'll end up taking this cap off and replacing it with a powder measure, but essentially they do the same thing. There's a collet in there that will expand the mouth of the brass so that it can accept the bullet. <clears throat> then we will have the seating die. This will actually seat the bullet into the brass and you can actually uh, crimp and seat at the same time, but I generally don't. This is a four hole. I'll go ahead and use the Lee uh, collet uh, crimp. And I, I really like that, that style of crimp. It's easy to use and it seems like seating and crimping in two separate stages just generally works better for me in most scenarios. So there's our dies. We're gonna need brass, preferably clean brass. These have all been tumbled, still have the old primers in them. Um, not super, I mean, just a regular old dry tumble. Gonna need a powder measure scale and tray. We are gonna need our bullets. In this case, I'm gonna be using these 180 grain berries. I'm just gonna be loading some just standard range ammo. These are hollow points, but they suck as actual hollow points. So they are now just range fodder. Gonna need your primers. I'm priming on the press. Uh, that's the way I choose to do it here. You can do, you can use a hand primer or whatever you choose to do to your prime. But this one has, this press has a priming arm for large and small. This is the large, since 10 millimeter takes a large pistol primer. That's, I've got the large cup in here and you're gonna need your shell holder. Now this will be specific to whatever round you're using. So if you're buying a set of dies, make sure that it either comes with one or you buy the appropriate shell holder for the round that you're gonna load. I know most of the Lee uh, die sets come with a shell holder. So uh, yeah, also you'll need, highly, highly recommend a set of calipers so that you can get your overall length of the actual round once you seat. So I don't want to try to get you a little closer here so you can kind of see what's going on. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is get our die set for sizing and deep priming. Now this is actually pretty simple. I will have my shell uh, holder on. I'll raise it all the way to the top and I will screw my die in. No. 
Okay, now you can see that it is making contact with my shell holder right here. So I feel that it's making contact. My nut is still loose. So it's making contact. I will lower the ram and I will give this another about an eighth of a turn, hold it, and then lock my ring down. Now the reason that I do that is for what you hear people talk about cam over. And let me just put it back around to the station, double check. You won't have to do that on a single stage for setting up, but feel there's contact and a little bit of cam over. So that's exactly what I want. <clears throat> so that's it with that dial. That's all you, that's all you do. <clears throat> so we're going to move on and I'm actually going to start a piece of brass here with this and show you there's the resize and the old primer is now out. I'm going to put a primer in this cup with the Lee safety prime, come down and seat the primer. So now I'm resized, I am reprimed, and we're ready for the next step. Okay, so the next step is going to be our expander die. The way that it is right now with this cap on, that's all that it will do. It will simply just expand the case mouth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with my powder measure and I'm actually going to dump powder on the press while I'm while I'm reloading. If you're running a single stage or if you're running a different setup, this is where you will expand the case mouth and then move to your your uh, powder drop station, whether it be just a single powder measure drop, electronic, however you want to do it off the press. But if you're doing it on press, I really like these uh, powder through expander dies. So I'll take that off, put in a powder measure, <clears throat> and now I'm going to do it kind of the same way. I'm going to raise my uh, ram all the way to the top. And I'm going to start twisting this die in. Okay, I can see it's starting to move my arm here. So I'm going to continue to do that until... Now, with this on here, I have to compress this spring before it'll stop the collet. If you've got just the cap on there or a standard expander die, you won't have to do that. This part, and I will show you where your, your adjustment would basically begin. Okay, so now I'm getting full expansion on this spring. So now I'm gonna actually, the collet's stopping. So now it's actually going to start expanding the case mouth a little bit as I go. <clears throat> so I can use my calipers and get a measurement which I recommend, you know, if you're gonna, if you're just starting out, measure everything, uh, you'll be glad that you did. Or a simple way to do it is you just see if the bullet starts. So that doesn't really set down in there very well. It wants to roll out. So we'll twist this about a, about a quarter of a turn, do it again, try it again. That's about right. That sits in there good and good and tight. It's not going to fall out. So that's what I want. You don't want to over expand your case mouth. You're just working the brass more than it needs to. You're going to reduce your case life and all that. So uh, the best way to actually lock that in is just go ahead and ram your brass in there and tighten it up. That'll lock the die in place and then you can just tighten your, your lock ring. So now that die is set. Now, there's no powder in here, so it's not dropping powder, but once I get the powder measure adjusted, filled up and adjusted to where I want it to drop, every time that I come around, it's, it's gonna drop powder and expand the case mouth at the same time. So let me do that real quick and get some powder in here, see what we're dropping, and we'll get that adjusted. Okay, now you can see I have my uh, powder jug back here. This is just force of habit. I recommend everybody get into this habit. Store your powder somewhere other than on your reloading bench and whatever powder you are using in the powder measure, leave that one jug out and that's it. 
you don't want to be pouring, you know, when this when you're done loading and you're going to empty your powder measure, you don't want to forget what powder you're using and dump a powder into a different jug that it don't belong in and ruin a bunch of powder or potentially be dangerous the next time you load with it if you don't realize you did it. So keep one jug of powder and that's whatever is in your powder measure. Keep that out and no more. So using long shot, according to my data that I developed previously, I keep a little notebook this thing is like gold to me this is my bible uh according to my data i'm going to be looking for uh right around 9.5 grains of long shot so i will turn my powder measure on i have no idea where this is at right now it may overflow the case i'm not sure maybe i won't turn it down a little bit and <clears throat> This is where our powder measure or our scale comes into play. Oh yeah, that is plumb full to the top. That's entirely too much. So I'll zero out my scale, measure that. Oh yeah, that's 17 grains. That's way too much. So now I will adjust my charge bar. Uh, some of these auto discs, they'll use like drum inserts or whole, uh, these type of discs right here that have pre-measured holes in them this drops in place of the charge bar i actually prefer the charge bar because it gives you a little bit more control so let's tighten that down try again i'm gonna dump that for consistency sake oh and that charge is at 9.9 .9. we got really close with that one so all right, what did I say, 9.5, looking back at my data. Triple check everything, guys, triple check everything. So just a few turns. I'll dump that one since I adjusted. And let's check. Okay, nine grains even, over adjusted. And this is just the, this is the tedious process, guys. You'll just, as a, if, if you're just getting into reloading, you'll, you'll realize this is, part of the game should be pretty close here all right 9.4 that is good uh, this powder measure will throw plus or minus 0.1 sometimes so 9.4 is great I'm gonna leave it right there and now we are set up on two of these dies so I'm gonna go ahead and drop my powder charge and now we have a primer, we have a resized case, we have an expanded case mouth, and we have powder in the case. So the next thing that we need is going to be a bullet. So we'll start our die in. This is one of those processes to where you, if you don't want to use the... Um, let me just get this nut screwed up. If you don't want to use the de uh, the crimping process in this die body, the best way to do that is to make sure everything is screwed out. Screw your seating stem out. Get it out of your way. Screw your nut up. Get it out of your way. And then you'll see a familiar process here. We're going to raise the brass up. We're going to screw the die in until it touches. There it is touching my my brass so if I was to take this die farther this die body farther down it would start reducing that expanded case mouth and start crimping so I don't want it to do that here so I'm gonna actually take, the, take it down give it a quarter turn left to take it back up and get it away from there and then I'm gonna lock my die body down and then my die body will be adjusted where I wanted it <clears throat> okay so now my die body is adjusted this is the seating stem and that's what's going to going to determine the depth of the bullet seat so i've got my primer got my powder i'm ready to put a bullet on so the, the properly uh, expanded case mouth holds the bullet firmly i'm going to start it up and you can see it, it didn't even, I don't even know if it touched it. So 
we will screw the stem down a little bit try again there we go now it's starting to seed it a little bit at a time you don't want to go too much you can always adjust the seat deeper but if you seat too deep then you got to pull the bullet so i'm going to make sure that my calibers are zeroed and then i'm going to measure so this is 1.4015 and according to my load data i'm looking for 1.26 so i need to seat deeper give it a little bit more of a turn do it again 1.37 just again one point three four five do it again one point three even we're getting there one point two eight Oh, sneaking up on it. 1.27. You can see, guys, it, it doesn't move a whole lot with these adjustments, but that's what you want. Like I said, you don't want to over-adjust. 1.2645. One more tiny adjustment. And there we are. 1.2590. That's, that's good enough for me. And like I said, uh, the bullet profiles will vary a little bit so you're going to have a plus or minus a little on that so all right so now we have primer we have a sized case we still have an expanded case mouth we have powder we have a bullet so now we got to get rid of this expanded case mouth because of this round head spaces on the case mouth itself so you do not want that to remain expanded so just for uh the sake of demonstration I'm going to measure what we actually expanded to on this case mouth, 0. 0.4260, okay? So now, we're going to do this die the same way. This is going to be our the factory crimp die. So we will start it in there, check it out, 0. 0.4260, and just the case body itself knocked it down to 0. 0.4215. So, <clears throat> we're going to adjust this down and pull this stem out just like we did our seating dive because that's what will hold the collar. And we will set that. Now, you can, I can feel in the press that it's not hitting anything once it goes past the initial entry of that die, which is kind of like a bulge buster. And then I can screw this down freely with it still up. So, there I found tension. So I will lower it, give it about a quarter of a turn, come back up, and feel. Okay, I felt that it actually did something, so let's measure. Okay, we are at 0 0.4, 1, or shoot, fell, came off the brass. 0 0.4215, so it didn't move it much at all. So let's give it another quarter turn or so. There we go, I felt a good little pressure at the top of that stroke. All right, 0.4195. Give it just a little more. You don't want to overdo it on your crimp either, especially with a plated bullet, because you can uh, mess up the plating on that bullet itself. Basically, all, you, all I want to do, and I mean, you, you may develop a different preference, but all I want to do is essentially remove that flaring. So, a little bit more. And... Honestly, that looks really good to me. Feels really good to me. Let's see what we're at. All right, 0.41. That's what we want. So there's a completed, uh, completed round, ready to go. And I'll run it through the whole process here one more time just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to get to reloading. So, spent brass. Well, shit. So I know. Spent brass, spent primer. It's been tumbled. Here we go. Resize the prime. New primer. Seat that primer. Expand the case mouth and drop the powder. I'm going to 
visually look into the case, make sure I have powder. Next step is going to be the bullet. The bullet is seated, brown, and there is our crimp, another loaded round. Just like that, guys. So, sorry for the long, boring process of setting up dies, but some people need it, and hopefully I can help somebody. Till next time, guys. Stay tuned.